We're designing spaces, the show that's all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. I'm Debbie Marie. And I'm David Jones. Here on Designing Spaces, we look at all aspects of your home and property, including lifestyle. Absolutely. Great topic. So stick around and see it all right here on Designing Spaces. Okay, today we start designing spaces dealing with child safety. Now, how safe are the outlets in your home? If there are little ones about, you probably have those plastic caps on the outlets not in use. Well, guess what? They're not all that safe. There is a way to ensure outlet safety, though, and we have the story. Take a look. Did you know that close to 25,000 children were injured in the course of 10 years by sticking things into electrical outlets? In fact, the National Electrical Code began requiring for residential construction that they put in tamper-resistant receptacles in 2008. Now, what if your home was built before 2008? Well, today on Designing Spaces, we're going to be solving that electrical dilemma. And joining us today is Michelle Salambini, who is product manager for Tampa Resistant Receptacles with Cooper Wiring Devices. Michelle, welcome to Designing Spaces. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, now I know a lot of times when it comes to do-it-yourself projects, especially electrical projects, a lot of people get scared and they think, all right, this is too much for me. Maybe I need to hire a professional, right? Right. It, electrical work can be very scary, but it doesn't have to be. In a few minutes, I'm going to show you just how easy it is. So what what makes a tamper-resistant receptacle resistant, and why is it so important? First of all, if you think about a receptacle, and when you plug a plug into a receptacle, you've got metal parts going into a receptacle mm -hmm. that connect with the metal parts inside, and that is what completes the circuit and allows for electricity to transfer, so whatever you've plugged in is now on. So in a tamper-resistant receptacle, you have a shutter in there that won't allow you to stick something into one side or the other side. You have to stick a plug in at the same time, oh. and then that way you can power on what, whatever you've just plugged in. All right, well, I think we have some plugs to go take a look at. Let's go. So we're in a family's home inside of their beautiful playroom, and I noticed they're using plastic caps on all of their outlets. And those are good, but I'm going to show you a permanent safety solution. Okay, great. So what do we do? Well, the first thing that we need to do to ensure our own safety is to go to the circuit breaker and make sure that we turn off the circuit so we cut the electricity to that receptacle. And then we'll come back into the room, and we can do a couple things. We can use a circuit tester to ensure that the power is off, mm -hmm. or we can do something as simple as plug in a lamp, turn it on, and if it doesn't come on, we know that we've killed the electricity to that receptacle. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the wall plate and then we're going to remove the receptacle by these two mounting screws. And it's that simple. Then we'll pull it out. Ah, no, there, there's the wires. That looks intimidating to me. Electrical work can be intimidating, but as long as you follow the installation instructions that come with the receptacle and consult your local building code, you should be fine. But if you have any concern at all, you should consult or hire an electrician. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to remove this bare wire, which is the ground wire, mm -hmm. snip the wires off, mm -hmm. okay. and we've removed the old outlet. All right. So the next thing is strip these wires mm -hmm. so that we can push them into the back of the tamper-resistant receptacle. Okay. All right. We're ready to install. Take the ground wire mm -hmm. and screw that around the green ground screw. Oh. The next thing is to push the wires into place. It's very simple as just pushing it in, and you'll hear it and feel it click. Mm -hmm. The next thing that we want to do is install the hot wire, and it's easy as just pushing it in to the hole that you have on the back, mm -hmm. and the second one, same thing. And then lastly, we'll put the white wire in, which mm -hmm. goes to the silver colored. All we've got to do now is push everything back into the box, and then we mount the wall plate. We just need to turn on the circuit breaker and our installation's complete. That was very easy. It's very easy. Oh, wow, I have to admit when you started pulling wires out, I got scared, but that looks not too bad. It's very easy. So this is not just something for parents to do, but everyone should do this. Absolutely, especially aunts, uncles, grandparents, anyone that may have children in their home because it's so easy to do. Mm, and now that we know how easy it is to do, where can we find them? You can find them at any Lowe's Home Improvement store, any home hardware store, or also at electrical distributors. 
but you can also get more information on cooperwiringdevices.com or childoutletsafety.org. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for coming in today and showing us how to change out a receptacle. Thanks I learned for a lot. Having me. For more information, you can go to our website at designingspaces.tv. For Designing Spaces, I'm Rhonda Castagna. More Designing Spaces coming up. Don't go away. More great ideas coming up. Right here on Designing Spaces. The backyard. It's the perfect place to relax with family and friends. And some of our favorite backyard parties revolve around the pool. So today on Designing Spaces, we're here in Houston, Texas to show you how to design the perfect pool. One that's fun, beautiful, and even eco-friendly. Inviting, isn't it? Well, this might just be the perfect swimming pool. It's got great ambience, it's a joy to swim in, it's easy on the pocketbook, and it's earth friendly too. How can it be all these things? We're going to find out from Kevin Patusik from Hayward Pool Products. Hi Kevin, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me on. With so many homeowners moving over to a greener lifestyle, people are buying more efficient appliances and remodeling their homes with newer materials. So a swimming pool would be the last place we'll consider in terms of going green. So. How can we make the pool eco-friendly, but still a center for family fun? It's really simple. I'm going to show you how to create a backyard environment that's suited for the entire family, while minimizing maintenance costs and making sure it's environmentally friendly. Great, so let's get started. Okay. Kevin, this pool equipment area is huge. It is a little bigger than your typical backyard pool equipment pad, but this is a pretty spectacular pool. That said, there are many elements of this equipment pad that are typical of what a regular backyard pool pad would look like. So it's a great place for us to start, and that's the EcoStar pump, which is the heart of the pool equipment pad and the heart of your energy savings opportunities when you talk about the energy solutions package. So what's unique about the EcoStar is it's a variable speed, which means that you can adjust the flow of water that the pump's delivering. On a normal pump, the majority of the time it's running at high speed, it's either on or it's off. And at that high speed, much of the time when it's just in filtration, you don't need that much flow. So with a variable speed pump, you slow down the flow so the majority of your energy is going to moving water. So the EcoStar offers up to 90% energy savings, and that means that you can actually pay for your new pool pump within the first year of use. It can be installed as a standalone pump without a pool controller because it has its control capability right on the pump, which means it's also great for retrofitting to an existing pool for all that energy savings. Or it can be installed to go along with the ProLogic pool controller, and then you have seamless control of all the speeds, all the features. So it gives you that versatility. You know, usually you can smell the chlorine around the pool, but I'm not smelling anything. That's actually because this has the AquaRite salt chlorine generator. Rather than using conventional chlorine that you buy at the store, this manufactures its own chlorine from salt that you actually put in the, the swimming pool. So it always manages the appropriate amount of chlorine to make sure that you have great sanitized water. And in addition to that, you have this incredible water quality. It gives you this soft, silky feel. So you don't have the itchy skin, the red eyes that are typically associated with chlorine. And as you say, you don't have the smell. One of the biggest chores about maintaining a pool is just cleaning it. Well, not with this pool because it has the tiger shark. So this is the tiger shark. Cool. Unlike most pool cleaners that can take up a lot of energy, the Tiger Shark operates on just a little bit more than what a 100 watt light bulb would operate on. So a Tiger Shark can actually pay for itself in as little as a year because of those energy savings. One of the additional features is it also has a little remote control. So if like you're having a dinner party, 
and uh, all of a sudden the guests are showing up and you realize that you actually have some leaves over in the corner of the pool, you can throw the tiger shark in, you can actually direct it over to where specifically it needs to get cleaned up, then bring it back over to the side and you take it out for when you have your dinner party. One of the great things about this pool is nearly every feature is being managed by the pool controllers. So you want to turn on your pool lights, you want to turn on your heaters, to, to, you want to adjust the temperature of the spa while you're sitting in it, you can do it with your handheld remote control. One of those other nice things is, back to that dinner party, so you're sitting down, you're having a nice quiet conversation with friends, you may not want Niagara Falls going on in the background. So you can scroll over and you find the waterfall button and you actually turn off the big waterfall so it brings down the sound level in the pool. It's truly about managing the ambiance of the backyard. So automation is definitely convenient, but is it also a green feature? It is very environmentally friendly. One of the biggest things is you're actually turning on equipment when it's supposed to be on, when it's needed, rather than having it run all the time. You can also manage it so the lights come on just at sunset. And so that way you're only, you know, so you've got that gorgeous color that the LED lighting can deliver, but it's also doing it just when it's needed. And you can have it shut off at 11 o'clock at night or when you normally turn in for the evening. The lights burn a lot of energy when they're left on a long time, right? Actually not these, these lights because they're ColorLogic LED lights. They are extremely efficient compared to conventional incandescent lighting, consuming 70 to 80 percent less energy, and they actually last 20 times as long as well. Even here in Houston, it's a little too cold in the wintertime to use a pool without a heater. But isn't that just another energy-sucking device? The heat pump is absolutely the most energy efficient way of maintaining heat for, for the full season. Some place like Houston or Arizona where the water gets really warm, you can actually cool down the water with a, one of the features of the heat pump. It's amazing to me that we can have our pool better than ever at a reasonable cost and still live a green lifestyle. And everything we've seen here is part of a Hayward Energy Solutions package. And you can see it on hayward-pool.com. Well, thanks, Kevin, for having Designing Spaces Pool site today. You're welcome. If you want to see this story again, visit designingspaces.tv, where you can also find a link to Hayward Pool products. For Designing Spaces, I'm Shelley Boozer. Obtaining an electrician when you really need one can be frustrating. How do you know what qualities and expertise you should look for when hiring an electrician? And is there a way that they can inspect the house for possible problems down the road? Well, to learn about electrical services and securing your house against potentially expensive and dangerous electrical problems, here's Rhonda Castagna. Your home's electrical system can be the most used mechanical system in your home and is often the most overlooked system in your home. When you're ready to install anything electrical or realize there may be a problem in your home's wiring, you need more than just a handyman. Designing Spaces teamed up with one group of professionals who have some very good advice on what you should expect from an electrician. My husband and I would notice that some of the lights in our house would dim throughout the day for no reason. We thought it was our imagination, but then finally, one night, part of the house went dark. It was a circuit breaker. After this happened several times, I noticed that one of the lamp plugs was hot. My gut feeling told me that this was a safety hazard for my house and for my family. So we know we needed an electrician. I didn't know who to call, who I could trust, who wouldn't rip us off, who would be able to work on my schedule and not theirs. We're here with Gail and Mike, along with Jamie Wilkie, who is brand president for Mr. Sparky, to learn about selecting and dealing with electricians. Now first, let's really define the role of an electrician. What type of work do they do on a house? Well, as electricians, we do all types of things in the home, from working on the circuit and wiring throughout the, the walls of the home to the main electric circuit panels and sub-panels to surge protection and lighting generators. We routinely receive service calls for people that have an outlet that doesn't work or a light switch that doesn't work to people that want to add recessed lighting in the kitchen or outdoor security lighting, all types of things. 
Now, I know when a homeowner has an electrical problem, usually they're left scouring the yellow pages or even searching on the internet for an electrician because we rarely need one. Exactly. Mike was involved in a big project and I was left to handle all of the electrical problems. We've never needed an electrician before, so who do I call? Yeah, that can be pretty scary. So it's obvious that Gail and Mike need help. So what do you suggest when a homeowner is looking for a professional electrical service? Here's five easy tips for you. Uh, first, is the electrician coming to the house certified and involved in ongoing training? Uh, second, is the company licensed and do they provide written guarantees? Are they willing to send an electrician out at a time that's convenient to you, not just for them? Fourth, would the electrician coming out be background checked and drug screened? And is the company willing to provide you with referrals? You know, you want to hire professional tradespeople. Uh, and Mr. Sparky, our electricians are certified and involved in ongoing training and, and attend seminars. We were also worried about cost. We didn't have a clue about electricians' prices. We didn't know if we were being gouged. Well, all of our electricians are going to present to you a price using our straightforward pricing guide. Now, you're going to know exactly what the repairs are going to cost down to the penny, and they'll wait for your authorization before any work begins. Well, that would be nice. No surprises, right? Mm -hmm. So what about guarantees? What can a homeowner expect? Well, the guarantee is just as important as the electrical repair, Rhonda. We guarantee our work for one full year. So if the repair breaks down during normal use during the first year, we'll repair or replace that item at no charge to you. In addition, the homeowner's complete satisfaction with the electrical repairs and our electrician is 100% guaranteed. We're also a member of UWIN, which is a guarantee of services that you can take to the bank. So I know a homeowner is supposed to have regular maintenance on their heating and cooling equipment, but are there any preventative measures that a homeowner could take to reduce the risk of electrical problems? Well, Rhonda, earlier you had asked me about should a homeowner have preventive maintenance on their electrical system. Mm -hmm. The reason why I wanted to bring you out to the garage is because at Mr. Sparky, we have a preventive maintenance plan that's called our Power Club. Mm -hmm. And the electrician is generally going to start in your garage where your main electric panels are. And so I just wanted to bring you here and show you what they'll be going over. Okay. Not only are they going to check and make sure every breaker is the right size and that the panel is labeled the way it should be, they're also going to open it up and make sure all the connections in there are tight the way they're supposed to be. Right. Okay. In addition, as part of having your power club, as they do their uh, electrical safety inspection, they're also going to find a few common items that we find in a lot of houses, like extension cords that are for temporary use that are being used permanently, like this one. Oh, so this is not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a good idea. Okay. Well, anything else that you noticed? Uh, well, if you take a look over here, well, here's something else, Rhonda, that is very simple uh, to fix, but can be very dangerous. It's very innocent looking that you just have an extension cord plugged into this outlet. Mm -hmm. But what this extension cord is being used for a permanent use. Mm -hmm. They have the water softeners outside plugged into this, and they're on all the time. Uh -huh. So instead of a temporary use cord, it's now being used as permanent use. And it's also not rated to have heavy objects leaned up against it like this. So over time, that could create a big problem. Yeah. Again, very easy to fix, but a big safety hazard that should be addressed and would be uh, caught as part of your power club safety inspection. Yeah, probably not a good idea to have all these heavy things against here, but anything else in here that you noticed? I know that they've got plugs everywhere, so... Does that look good to you? <laughs> that looks a little <laughs> scary to me. And Rhonda, this is something else your electrician is going to take care of for you as part of your power club maintenance plan, is your smoke detectors you see here. Oh, right. They're actually going to test all the smoke detectors in your home, mm -hmm. and they're also going to replace all the batteries while they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Something else they're going to do is they're going to test and make sure that that smoke detector hasn't expired because a lot of people don't realize smoke detectors expire every 10 years. Well, I didn't know that myself. So if I wanted to check and see if my smoke detector is expired, how would I do that? Well, that's actually uh, something you should leave to a professional electrician because you actually have to take the smoke detector down to check that. Oh. So just make sure you have your electrician check that out for All you. Right. Sounds good. So what else do we need to look at? Well, come here. Let me show you. Okay. Well, Rhonda, this is another area your electrician will find for you on his electrical safety inspection. Mm -hmm. is this is a common area where a person would want more light. And a homeowner thinks they can just replace a light bulb with a higher wattage light bulb, but that can actually create a lot of problems. Because mm -hmm. the higher wattage produces a lot of heat, and that heat can derate the wires in the fixture as well. And this is a common problem we see right here. Yikes. That last tip sounds like us. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. We're going to set up an appointment right after this show. I think that's a good idea. So where can our viewers find out more information? You can just visit our website at mrsparky.com. All right, and we'll also put a link to their website on our website at designingspaces.tv where you can review any part of this show again. Gail and Mike, thank you so much for allowing us into your home. And at sure. least tonight, you can rest a little easier knowing that your home is going to be made electrically safe. And thank you so much, Jamie, for all of your great advice. Thanks. It was a pleasure being here. For Designing Spaces, I'm Rhonda Castagna. See you later.
You know, do-it-yourself projects give such a feeling of accomplishment. I mean, I feel like I could take on anything. Yeah, but when it comes to things like electrical problems, you want that experienced pro like we just saw. Okay, yeah, but you know what? I could learn from observing. All right, well, good luck with that. <laughs> we are out of time right now, though, but here's something you can do with a lot of expertise. Say goodbye. There you go. <laughs> okay, well, goodbye. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next week. I'm Debbie Murray. And I'm David Jones. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show or to find out how to be part of the show, log on to designingspaces.tv. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash dspacesTV or friend us on Facebook. Type in the words Designing Spaces. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.